Yes, hello everyone, this is the last one. Hope you've enjoyed all of our live videos. If you haven't seen them, go on, go back, check them out. Uh, first time we've been live, uh, we're going to continue that now after a dispute with uh, the club, but we are back. This is the last word. Coming up, we're going to be talking about the lineups, the game. We're also going to hear a clip from Carl about the substitutions that Steve Bruce got it right and should it be more often, because let's face it, it should be. And of course, we'll get a bit of reaction as well. We'll also have a little check on the league table with Newcastle closer to European place than they are to the bottom, which is mad. But let's begin with the lineups. Obviously, there was a lot of talk about Newcastle. Who was out? Who was hit with COVID? You can probably look at this lineup and you see, I actually think it's pretty strong, to be honest with you. If you look how strong it is, considering we, we, there was talk of 11, 11, 12 players being out. Obviously, no Fernandez, no Lascelles, no Gillespie. There was no Manquillo, no St. Maximum off the top of my head. Anybody I've missed, I'm not sure. But there was still a good core of squad players and first team players available at Steve Bruce. And I was pretty happy with it. Very happy to see two up top and just four at the back. West Brom, I, I looked at their bench and thought, that's pretty strong bench. You know, if you look at that, you've got Livermore on the bench. You've got the winger, Dean Garner, on the bench. You've got Charlie Austin on the bench. I thought that was quite strong by them, considering where they are on the table. But, obviously, the we highlighted Conor Gallagher, and we're pre-live stream as well, before Carl took over with Adam for the uh, live watch-along. And, yeah, the lad, for me, was their best player, and possibly a candidate for actually being best player in the whole of the game. Conor Gallagher on loan from Chelsea, I thought he'd done very well. But uh, going into the game, of course, we got off to an absolute fucking flyer. Flyer it was. Uh, I was literally just sitting doing. Uh, just got me drink and obviously I spilt it all because obviously we scored literally straight away. We're second quickest ever Premier League goal. Great little build up by Wilson. I like about Wilson, he puts himself about. He plays Joe Linton and Joe Linton's awareness. You know, he has been criticised for that. Outside the boots, um, West Brom are all over the place in terms of marking their left back O'Shea, but Almira on first time puts Newcastle uh, in front, and Newcastle are off uh, celebrating through Miguel Almira on great start. Could he capitalise on that? Can he go and get two? Can he go and get three? That was my only concern because we had a chance for Joe Linton when he was played through and he cut back and should have should have really gone across the goal. West Brom they didn't really test Darlow on such an, uh, in terms of saves. But they were, having, they were growing in confidence. We were having a lot more of the ball, in particular towards the end of that first half. Newcastle went in 1-0 up. But I still wasn't convinced that Newcastle had this game wrapped up. And you think, yourself coming into the game, you think even even Newcastle's COVID side, in with the players out, because we were fearing it, who was available. You know, because we were talking maybe Ellie Anderson might be involved in stuff and he didn't even make the bench. But anyways, I'm rambling on. But going back, you think you've got to beat West Brom. And I was thinking, we need a second goal here. And the second half came out, and they were the better side. For, but they weren't clinical, if you want to call it that. We've seen Charlie Austin come on, Kieran Gibbs come on. Forgot about him in the lineups, didn't I? They were strong, and they were having a lot of the ball. A lot of shots going wide, a lot of corners. You can see why they're near the bottom, because they haven't got a finisher. And they, they deserved the equaliser, to be fair, when it was 1-1. Um, which came pretty quick through Furlong. Now, there is obviously question marks around, first of all, Emile Kraft by Matty Phillips, who uh, I thought Matty Phillips had a fairly quiet game, considering we pinpointed him as another threat. And the cross comes in. Jamal Lewis is just asleep, isn't he? He's got to go the ball rather than the ball come to him. And it, you've got to say Furlong, it's a, it's a fantastic finish in the corner. And anybody who's old enough to remember his dad, Paul, who played for Chelsea in QPR as a striker, that's his son. And obviously... He started his career at QPR and he was, he, I thought he tested um, Lewis quite a bit there. I thought Lewis struggled defensively, which has been highlighted in the live shows already. And to be to, to be fair, West Brom were dominating up till about the 65th minute. I was a little bit worried. I was saying to the lads in the WhatsApp, it's only going to go on my way. We're going to get beat here. But credit where credit is due, due sorry, Steve Bruce made the changes. Matt Ritchie went a left back. He put Joel Linton out wide. He put Gale on. Later on, he brought a Murphy to play a right back instead of Kraft. It was the right decision that paid off because we looked better, looked a, had a better shape of it. And of course, we got the goal. Made the West Brom, as we've joked upon, because both players were loaned out West Brom, Murphy and Gale, of course. And Murphy's a fucking brilliant whipped in cross, isn't it? Whips it in, and there's Dwight Gale. And the only problem that I've got with Dwight Gale, he's just not fit enough at the minute. That's the problem. You've seen at the back end of the season, he scored four in eight. He's got one and one. And 
it, I was quite intrigued how his relationship was going to develop with Wilson during the game. And I would like to see it on Wednesday night if Bruce doesn't rotate as much. I know the COVID situation might hit the squad a bit, but brilliant header in of the bar. And uh, Newcastle were fairly comfortable seeing the game out. We won 2-1, which is fantastic. Uh, did we deserve to win? Probably not. I think West Brom are very unlucky to come away with zero. But, you know, Slavin Bilic is under massive, massive uh, pressure at the minute. And he probably got a feel from a little bit, but they just haven't got a quality striker. And that's probably where they need to look, look at in January. Um, but let's take a look at the league table. Look where Newcastle are at the minute, man. Um, we're looking up rather than down because Newcastle are way clear of the bottom three. Uh, I think it's 11 points now. If you look further up, you're only talking three points off fifth place West Ham. Uh, there might be sixth place depending on the Manchester derby. But, yeah. Look, it's it's... it's Difficult to give Bruce credit, but I think you've got, to, especially with his substitutions, he was spot on today. And I asked Carl about that as well. Should we, should we be doing that a lot more? Because I generally feel we've got to be a lot more braver. We've got to be getting the substitutions earlier. And this is what Carl said. Whether credit where credit's due, he has made two attacking changes to allow us to push on in the final third of the game to go out and win it. And that first one being Dwight Gale coming on for Jamal Lewis. Steve Bruce bringing on an attacker for a fullback. Now, this might have been the easier of the changes to make. Easier of the two changes to make, that is. Jamal Lewis was very lackadaisical, allowing West Brom and Furlong to come in and score that, that equalising goal. Arguably could be put down to Emil Kraft as well. That being said, Gale comes on, 69th minute, makes an immediate impact. Um, not only that, he's going to make his second change in the 79th minute to bring Jacob Murphy on for Emil Kraft. This one, I feel, potentially could have been made earlier, but it doesn't matter because it worked out very well anyway. And... Jacob Murphy comes on, unbelievable cross, unbelievable cross. Like you'll have seen in previous videos, Sam, you know, would um, explain that as completely sexual. Uh, you know, he'd have got his kicks from that. It was a brilliant cross into Dwight Gale. What a fantastic header that was! An absolute bullet header. Top bins, two one, Newcastle United. He's gonna made a third change of DeAndre Yedlin. Um, coming on as well to try and see the game out. I was a bit surprised by this one. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. We've got the win. Do I want to see these kinds of substitutions in the future? Absolutely I do. And I just hope that Steve Bruce can look at this game. Yes, it was against West Brom, but you look at this game, make, make these kind of changes and think, actually, I do have the quality um, or at least an ounce of quality and belief in these players that they can go out and get this job done. It proves we've missed Dwight Gale. He goes out and he does, you know, he takes a game by the scruff of the neck. He makes a nuisance of himself. Yes, he's not a prolific goal scorer in the Premier League, but I believe he can do a job for us. I thought um, moving Joe Linton back over to the left-hand side and, and essentially not bringing him off was, was good as well because I, I felt he had a good game. But in a nutshell, please, Steve Bruce, more of this. It will keep us off your back. But yeah, it's been Carl. I'll pass you back over to Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, mate. Right, okay, so that's Carl's thoughts on it. Um, we'll obviously get reaction from the Toon camp because of copyright reasons we can't play video. And this is a reaction from Toon. I mean, that's how difficult it is, the Premier League. You know, if you're in the bottom half of the Premier League, it's very difficult to put back back wins together it's very difficult to win one so we're delighted to be able to put back to back it just gives us everybody a lift to going into what is a grueling schedule over the next few weeks and it's well documented the problems we've had so um there was a few tired bodies out there who were you know still just recovering from the virus so i can't speak highly enough for the players that in in a tough couple of weeks they've they've stuck at it and got a result which is great isaac did very well when he, he played there and my old chief scout, Stan Tennant, used to always say that he was his, that's his best position. <laughs> when he was a kid at Arsenal, he played there, so he wasn't new to it, but I, I think you're right, he, he played fantastically well. Well, he had a good, he had a great finish to the season when we came back, and unfortunately he got injured in a pre-season game at Crew, which was so innocuous. Come back, worked extremely hard, and I've said many times, I think I've tried to sign him three, four times, and could never afford him, I keep telling them. But he reminds us all that he's a goal scorer and he's got a finish. And uh, it was typical him. You know, he gets across the defender, great ball in. Um, delighted for him and all the hard work he's put in. And there we go, everybody. That is your wrap-up of all of our videos. 
this evening. Like I say, it's been brilliant how we can go live again. Um, you can probably tell by the bags of my eyes. I've been at work and doing all the vids all day and editing them and what have you. But yeah, it's fantastic that Newcastle have got uh, six points from six. Now we're looking up rather than down Leeds on Wednesday. And obviously we'll have a, a quick preview for that for the game coming up as well. But yeah, happy that we've won. Performance could be better, but we've won a game. What else? What else can you want? Tell everyone. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.